Um, and it's nice to be here with uh, you all with Steps of Life. Steps of Life is an amazing ministry. Amen? Amen. How many of you have been blessed by Steps of Life? Praise the Lord. Well, let's pray, and then we'll get right into this morning's presentation. Father, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. Lord, this is indeed one more Sabbath closer to your soon advent. And now we ask for your Holy Spirit to be here with us, Lord. Speak to us, reveal your character of love to us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A false Adventism is our presentation this morning. A false Adventism. You know, when I came here to Australia, I turned on the TV in various hotels that we were staying in, I constantly realized that the majority, or not the majority, but constantly, American news was playing on Australian TV. And I wonder why in the world would you Australians be concerned about what's <laughs> going on in America? But it seems to be that Donald Trump is the face of every single newscast every single day. Uh, you know, this past year, we in America have seen a very interesting political cycle. We saw for the first time in, in American history, a woman clenched the, the nomination for a major party, and also for the first time in American history, someone with no experience in politics whatsoever actually win the nomination of his party and actually win the presidency. Now, something which took place on the campaign trail was Donald Trump constantly calling the media the dishonest press and the fake news. How many of you have heard this term, fake news, from the mouth of Donald Trump? Yes, a very popular term. He calls them fake news. And I constantly were, was hearing this term, fake news, fake news, fake news. And I got to thinking, yes, there is so much fake news in the media today. Yes, there is so much fake news in the world today. But what about in God's remnant, Seventh-day Adventist Church? The fake news be taught in God's beloved church. So much fake news has plagued the world today, and could it be possible that fake news is entering our own very conversations? You know, we find fake news being preached from our own pulpits on Sabbath mornings. We find fake news being taught in our own colleges and universities day by day. We, we, we find fake news all around us, and the Bible tells us that in the last days, deceptions will come upon the world, and if possible, even the very one, elect might be deceived. Why? Because of fake news. Now, I want you to notice the condition of God's people described in the third chapter of Revelation. Let's turn there now. Revelation chapter 3, third chapter, looking at verse 16. Here the Bible describes the condition of God's last day people, the Laodicean church. You see, in the book of Revelation, we, we find seven churches. How many churches? Seven. And these seven churches historically symbolize seven periods throughout church history. And here we are looking at the final church from the time of the end until now, 1844, until the close of probation, the church of Laodicea. Verse 16, Christ says, so then because thou art, what's the word there, everybody? Lukewarm. Lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So here Christ is, is talking, he's addressing to the Laodicean people, and he tells them, because you're not cold, because you're not hot, you disgust me, and I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Verse 17. Because thou sayest I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that you are wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. How many of you have met people who claim wealth today? Not physical wealth, not earthly wealth, but spiritual wealth. I'm rich, I'm increased with goods. You know, as Adventists, we are extremely blessed people. What do you say, amen? We are extremely blessed. We have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to Scripture. We can break down the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. We can tell you about the seven churches and trumpets and seals and go on and on about the various truths that God has bestowed to us. We're rich, we're increased with goods. But to those same people, Christ says, you're rich. You're miserable. You're poor. You're blind. And naked. We have the Sabbath message. We know what happens when someone dies. We know about this thing in, in heaven called the sanctuary and the courtyard, holy place, most holy place. We know all these wonderful truths. We talk about Christ coming again. We even have a health message to accompany our, theolo our theology. We're rich. We're increased with goods. But instead, Christ says, 
Adventists, you're miserable, you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're naked. How is it possible that to these people who are rich and increased with the wealth of knowledge, how is it possible that those people receive the words from Christ? Wretched, miserable, poor, but blind and naked. You know, Christ talks about this in the 15th chapter of Matthew, and he says, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their what? Their heart is far from me. Could that be said about you and I today? We honor God with our mouth. We honor Him with our lips. But is our heart close to Jesus Christ? That's what counts in the final days of Earth's history. You know, Christ uh, tells these exact same people in the end, Depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work in it. Now, something's missing here. You know, how is it possible that so many Christians in the last days who have this wealth of knowledge, but they have no clue who Christ is? How is that possible to know about someone but not know the person? You know, I can go on and on about uh, who the Queen of England is and how she dresses and her beautiful outfits and her beautiful hats and her beautiful crown and so on and so forth. But unless I know her personally, she has no clue who I am. And the fact is, too many Adventists know about God, but they have no clue who He is personally. Mm -hmm. Too many Adventists can tell you how God operates, what day He wants us to worship on, how He eats, how He wants us to eat, but we have no clue who He is personally. And that's what really counts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what counts in these last days. You know, there was a man named Saul, in the New Testament, you see, Saul was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was an upper-class citizen, a member of this group of people who knew their Bible. They knew the Hebrew Torah. They knew the laws of Moses. A member of the Sanhedrin, and Paul became, or Saul, I should say, became a bounty hunter. Went around and killing Christians, killing those who believed in the gospel of Christ. And one day, Saul was on his way to a town called Damascus. And something happened on his way to Damascus. What happened? Christ appeared to Saul, right? He knocked him off his horse and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he says, who are you, Lord? A crazy question, isn't it? I'm telling you who you are, but I'm asking you who you are. Who are you, Lord? He knew who it was. But <laughs> I'm asking you who you are, Lord. Makes no sense to me. And the sad reality is there are too many Saul's in God's church today. There are too many Saul's in the Seventh-day Adventist church today who possess this wealth of knowledge, members of this group of elites who know the Bible, but they travel around spiritually murdering others who view differently from them. The fact is, God has to sometimes knock us off our horse and reveal himself to us and blind us sometimes, go through the pain to get us to realize our broken condition. You know, as I travel the world today, today I notice that this condition everywhere, something called apathy. Apathy. A apathy pervades churches around the world. It pervades many youth groups and old people's groups and young adult groups. And wherever you go, you always find apathy. And the question is, why is there so much apathy filling our church? Why is it that there are so many broken people in the church? Well, notice what Ellen White says in Testimonies, Volume 9, page 42. She says, it is a mystery that there are not hundreds at work where there is but what? One, the heavenly universe is astonished at the apathy, the coldness, the listlessness of those who profess to be sons and daughters of God. And then she says, in the truth, there is a living power. The fact is, too many of us believe in this truth, but there's no power in our lives. We believe in the one who is called truth but there's no power in our lives. 
The fact is, if you are beholding the right God, if you're beholding the right Christ, if you are believing the right gospel, you will be changed. What do you say, amen? Amen. amen? If no change is happening in your heart, you're focusing on the wrong Christ. If no change is happening in your heart, you have the wrong gospel because the gospel of the Bible is the everlasting gospel which changes lives. Amen. It brings change. Not just in status, but in character. Mm. This false gospel says that change, that, that the gospel just changes your status. Beloved, that is the biggest lie in the world today. Yes, the gospel changes your status, but it also changes your character. It changes who you are. It transforms us from the inside out. And God can do that to every single person here if we simply let him. Amen. And the problem with the Laodicean people is we know all about Christ, but we never let him inside, which is why we find Christ talking to the Laodicean people, knocking, saying, Behold, I stand at the door and do what? And knock. Why is Christ knocking? In the beginning of, of the seven churches, Ephesus, we find Christ in the midst of his people. Mm-hmm. At the end of the seven churches, he's outside the door, knocking, trying to get in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. To these same people, they know a, about the man who's knocking on the door, but they're afraid to open the door and let him in. And because Christ is not in their house, change does not take place. They're stuck in the bed of sin. They can't get out of this thing called sin. Notice Ellen White says, there is a fearful state of coldness and apathy among professed Christians. They are feeling uncharitable, unforgiving. These evil traits 